Assalam o Alaikum everyone. Hope you're all safe and sound. According to our today's lesson planner, we have test one, page thirty-three to t page thirty-five of workbook. So, first question over part A is related to the poem. We will read the entire poem that is given on the first page, and then we will answer the questions that are given on the next page. So, first of all, let's begin with the poem. I'm reading the poem, so you're going to read the poem very carefully. Ho for the pirate Don Dirk of Dowdy. He was as wicked as wicked, wicked could be. But oh, he was perfectly gorgeous to see. The pirate Don Dirk of Dow D. His, his conscience, of course, was as black as a bat, but he had a pl floppity plume on his hat. And when he went walking, it jiggled like that, the plume of the pirate Dow D. Oh, he had a cutlass that swung at his thigh, and he had a parrot called Paperkin Pie, and a zigzag scar at the end of his eye had pirate Don Dirk of Dow D. He kept in a cavern this buccaneer bold, a curious chest that was covered with mold, and all of his pockets were jingly with gold. Oh, jing went the gold of Dow D. It's sure he was wicked as wicked could be. His sins they outnumbered a hundred and three. But oh, he was perfectly gorgeous to see the pirate Don Dirk of Dow D. So this was the entire poem. If you look very carefully, if you, if you read very carefully, you will understand that the whole poem is about a pirate. So the whole poem is about a pirate, about his appearance and about his look. It is said that the, that the pirate was gorgeous and he was a good looking person and he had a cutlass. Cutlass means a knife, a ki kind of a knife that swung on his thighs and he has a parrot on, sitting on his shoulder with a soft feather that is <clears throat> attached to his hat and he had a lot of gold that were that his pockets were full of a lot of golds and he was considered as one of the sinners though he was a good looking person but he was a wicked person an evil person so this was a short summary of the given poem let's see what are the questions that are given at the end now question number one is answer the following questions about the poem some of the questions uh, that are relevant to the poem are given over here so we are going to answer them correctly. Let's see what's the first one. What was the pirate like? Mention three different things about his character, not about his appearance. And the answer is that the pirate was as wicked as he could be. He was an evil person and he had a black conscience and he was considered as a sinner. He was a sinner. All right, let's see the second one. What did the pirate look like? Describe his appearance. How did he look like? What was his physical appearance? So the answer is that he was gorgeous, he was very good looking and he wore a plume in his hat. Plume is a soft feather. He, wore, he used to wear a soft feather in his hand and a large cutlass and he had a large cutlass on his thighs, a large knife on his thighs. Next part is, what do you think the following words mean in the poem? So some of the hard words are given, we will simply write their meanings. First of all, Floppity. Floppity means moving from side to side. Something that moves from side to side. Next one, buccaneer. That means a pirate. Mold. That means a fungus. And the last one is plume. That I have told you before, it means a feather. Alright. So moving towards our fourth part now. What is a cutlass? Can you think of another word to describe this object? So let's see what's a cutlass. A cutlass is a knife. It's a kind of a knife. It can be described as a sword, a blade, a dagger or something else. Okay. So it's a knife. It can be a sword, a blade or a dagger. Next one. What can you say about the rhyming pattern in the poem? So this is a tricky question. Let me explain you first. So in the poem we have five different stanzas that are given. So if you will focus in the first and the fifth stanza, you will see that the the words, the, the rhyming words at the end of first and the fifth stanzas are same. Like dowdy, b, c, dowdy. These all of these have the same sounds. And over here, b, three, c, dowdy. So all of these are have the same rhyming words. They have the same sounds. So that's why. One stanza one and stanza five, first and the fifth stanza 
have the rhyming pattern as a a a and a so if they are same if if they have the same sounds we will consider them all a but if we will look closely at 2 3 and 4 we can see that the rhyming words that are coming at the end the first three bat hat dat have the same sounds while dowdy is a little bit different so we will consider 1 2 and 3 the first three as a and the second one as b and just like this over here thai pi i these three are the same so we will write them a and dowdy this one is b bold mold gold all of them are same so a over here and dowdy is different so b over here so the rhyming pattern of one and five is a a a and a and two three and four have a a a and b so the answer is stanzas one and five are a a a and a and stanzas two three and four are triple a with b a a a and b all right and the last part is which line tells us that the poet liked the look of the pirate so what was that line in the poem what was that verse in the poem that shows us that the poet actually likes the physical appearance of the pirate and that line was when the poet says but oh he was perfectly gorgeous to see so this was our first part that was related to the poem now we are moving to words part b now now our part b question number one is answer the following questions from the textbooks now some of the questions that are related to the textbook that we have already read before are given over here i'll give you a quick review of these questions and we will answer the given questions so first one is why did robinson crusoe not take the gold coins from the shipwreck as we all know that Robinson Crusoe was sailing in the ship when his ship got wrecked and it came all the way towards an island and he did not take out the gold coins from the ship. So this is the same question that why he did not take the gold coins from the shipwreck. So the answer is that because he had no use for those gold coins on the desert island. Obviously he was on a desert he was on an island so he had no use of those gold coins on the island so he left those coins over there next question is why does the student do not prepare for the history test this question is from the poem which was named as this morning is our history test and in this poem, we have been told about those students who know nothing about the test and the methods and the techniques they use for cheating so we have been told about the history test and how students use uh, use different methods to uh, to cheat during history tests so the question is that what does the student do, uh, do to prepare for the history test so in order to prepare for the history test what did they do the answer is that he writes notes and quotes in order to cheat so what do they do they, they used to write quotes and notes so that they could cheat Third question is, what did, uh, what did Gerald's brothers want to do to the scorpions? Now, this question belongs to the story that was named as the world in the wall, or the whole world, or the world in a wall. So, the question belongs to that story in which Gerald brought some of the scorpions in the matchbox from the garden, from his play yard. And by mistake, his brothers opened up, accidentally, he, his brothers opened up the, the matchbox and all the scorpions came out sprawling on their hands. So in, in panic, in a great panic and in a great fear, they tried to kill the scorpions because they were quite afraid of the scorpions. So this is the same question that what did Gerald's brothers want to do with the scorpions? So the answer is that they wanted to kill the scorpions. What did they do? They wanted to kill the scorpions. And the next question is that, what are some of the things you will need to start a collection of flowers? This question is from our story that was named as Collecting Things, in which we have been told about our favorite hobbies. So they're asking us that in order to start a collection of flowers, what are the basic things that we need? So we need a notebook, a pencil, an album, a scrapbook, newspaper, and a magnifying glass. All right? And the last question is that, where did the poet say that the Skylark's nest must have been? Obviously, we can see that the, story, the, the question belongs to the poem that was named as the Skylark. And the poet is asking that uh, 
where the skylark's nest must have been. We know that the skylark poem was based on the flying of the skylark, that it keeps on flying above the trees under the sky, and it can hear different songs and different sounds, and it keeps on enjoying the weather. So the question is that, that where must be, must have been the skylark's nest? So the answer is that the, the skylark had a nest that was unseen among the cornfield. Its nest was somewhere that could never be seen, but it was somewhere among the cornfield. So this was question number one. Let's move towards question number two now. Now, question number two is, answer the following questions with reference to the context. Some of the verses of the poem or some of the lines from the poems are given. We're going to answer the given questions that belong to these lines. Let me read the lines first. He curled his nose and said, Dear me, I would not waste an hour. So the first question is, from which poem are these lines taken? So these lines are taken from Sour Graves. The poem that we read. So the poem was about the fox in which the po in which the fox saw the grapes and he tried to catch the grapes, but he keeps uh, he kept on trying, but in the end he failed, and said that the grapes are sour. So the next question is that who is speaking these words? Who was saying all these words? I mean, who was saying these sentences? These lines were said by whom? So the answer is that the poet is quoting the fox while the fox is speaking. The poet was quoting, that means the fox was actually saying these lines, but the poet was the one who was copying or quoting the fox sayings. Third one, what did he curl? What did he curl his nose to show? So why did he curl his nose and what did he want to show? He wanted to show that he was not interested in the grapes, that he was no longer interested in those grapes. What, what would he not waste an hour doing? So why he never wanted to waste an hour and for what he never wanted to waste an hour? He never wanted to waste an hour to go after the grapes and eat them. Obviously when he tried and when he kept on trying in the end he never wanted to waste, to waste his time anymore. And the last one is that what did he say in the end? He said that I'm sure those grapes were sour. Obviously, when he couldn't reach the grapes in the end, he simply said that the grapes are sour. So this was over today's lesson. Thank you so much for listening.